One of the first things that I look at when I'm analyzing a face is the horizontal proportions. But there's two aspects that can visually alter the top third of your horizontal proportions, and that's hairline and cranial top. So today, I'm going to talk about the different hairlines and their impact on your facial proportions. And I'm also going to talk about the height of your cranial top and what kinds of impact high or low cranial top can have on your proportions as well. Understanding these two features and their effect on your proportions is really important in finding the right hairstyle. So make sure you stay tuned till the end. Before I dive in, I want to share with you some recent photos from the client that I used as an example in my Find Me My Best Hairstyle and Eyebrows video. In the video, I walked you guys through the proportional analysis of one of my clients and I recommended curtain bangs and a pixie cut for her. And she went ahead and got her a new haircut. I think she looks so cute and chic with this new hair. I also love her outfits in these photos and she has really great style overall, right? And I think the pixie cut is a great match for her style as well as her proportions and she looks super fashionable. She shared these photos with me to let me know how happy she was with the new cut and I was really hoping for some before and after photos since I used her as an example in one of my videos. So I thought it would be really cool to share with you these photos as well. So thank you again Kamal for sharing these beautiful before and after photos. I'm really glad that you love your new hairstyle and that it gave you the confidence boost that you needed. If you guys are interested in the details of our facial analysis and if you haven't watched the video yet, I will link it up here as well as in the description for you to watch after this video. Okay, so going back to the main topic, let's first talk about hairline. Like I mentioned, one of the first things that I look at when I'm analyzing a face is looking at the horizontal proportions. Now, if you guys don't know what I mean by horizontal proportions, it's dividing the length of the face into three sections and then comparing the distances for each of these sections to see which part is the longest or the shortest. Why that's important is because the longest section in your horizontal proportions is the area that tends to draw the most emphasis or attention. So the face is divided into three sections by looking at the distance from your hairline to your eyebrows. So that's the top third. And then the distance from your eyebrows to the tip of your nose is your middle third. And then from the tip of your nose to the end of your chin is your lower third. So if your top third is the longest section of the face, for example, then our eyes are drawn to the forehead area the most. And if your middle third is the longest section, then our eyes are first drawn to the nose area and so on. But like I mentioned, the shape of your hairline can alter this emphasis that's brought to your forehead. I actually brought up this topic in my small foreheads video using Selma Blair as an example. When we look at Selma's horizontal proportions alone, her top third is about the same length as her middle third, but her forehead appears smaller because she has a very narrow and triangular hairline. On the opposite side, if we look at Kim Kardashian, for example, her horizontal proportions are very well balanced, but she has a square, almost a slightly M-shaped hairline. So even though lengthwise her forehead is not the longest section, because of the shape of her hairline, it makes her forehead wider and her eyes are drawn to her forehead more when her hairline is completely exposed. So for these kinds of faces, a middle part works really well because it covers the longest part of your forehead, which is along the sides, whereas a side part actually exposes that longest part and brings more emphasis to your forehead instead of to your eyes. Now, a general rule of thumb when it comes to the middle part is that you should avoid the middle part if you have a long face. But Kim is an exception. If we look at her facial width to length ratio, Kim has a long face. And if you remember from my middle part versus side part video, I explained that a middle part visually lengthens the face more because it draws our eyes down the center of the face. But in Kim's case, since her hairline is slightly M-shaped and the longest part of her forehead is along the sides, a side part will draw more emphasis to her forehead than a middle part and cause an imbalance in her horizontal proportions. Now when the horizontal proportions are balanced, even if the overall length of your face is long, the face will appear less long compared to faces that have an imbalance. If we compare these three faces of equal length, for example, the face in the middle that has the most balanced horizontal proportions appears the least long out of the three. 
So for Kim, even though she has a long face, using a middle part to bring balance to her horizontal proportions is more important for her. So this is an exception of a long face that should be wearing a middle part, despite the general rule of thumb. Also, I noticed that Kim's hairline has changed over time. If we look at her older photos, she used to have a slightly short top third compared to her middle and lower thirds. And back then, she actually wore the side part more often, and that's partially because I guess it was more of a trend back then, but also because, like I explained earlier, because of the shape of her hairline, a side part exposes the longest part of her forehead. So back then, it made her horizontal proportions appear more balanced when she wore a side part because a middle part made her forehead appear even smaller. Looking at more recent photos of Kim with the altered hairline, it looks like she cleaned up all of her baby hair, but it also looks like the hairline itself was pushed back in the center, right? Because the horizontal proportions are measured down the center of the face, by pushing back the hairline in the center, her horizontal proportions are now more balanced than before, and now she can wear a middle part without her forehead appearing small. Even with updos, you'll notice that a lot of the times she wears a middle part to cover the hairline or she'll use a little bit of baby hair just along the corners of her hairline to make it appear more rounded. Between these two photos, we can see how when she uses baby hair to cover the corners of her hairline, it makes it appear rounder and draws less emphasis to her forehead. Now let's talk about the second topic of this video, which is cranial talk. Again, in the middle part versus side part video, I used Kendall Jenner as an example of someone with a high cranial talk. And for those of you that don't know what I mean by a high or a low cranial top, the cranial top refers to the crown of the head and how high or low the crown is in relation to your hairline. So someone with a high cranial top like Kendall Jenner, when we look at the frontal view, the distance from the hairline to the top of the head is quite long. On the other hand, Olivia Cook is a great example of someone with a low cranial top. You can see how the difference in the distance from the hairline to the top of the head is quite significant between these two photos. Now today I'm going to focus more on low cranial top and its effect on your proportions. If we look at this photo, which obviously makes the hairline and the height of the cranial top very apparent, it looks like Olivia has a pretty big forehead compared to the rest of her face, right? But if we measure her horizontal proportions, her top third is only slightly longer than her middle or lower thirds. But like I talked about with Kim Kardashian, Olivia has a square and wide hairline that makes her forehead wider than someone with a rounder hairline, and she also has a very low cranial top. With the low cranial top, the contrast between the length of her forehead versus the distance from her hairline to the crown, that difference in length becomes more apparent when the cranial top is low. So it actually makes her forehead appear bigger, even though horizontal proportions wise, the length of her forehead is not that much longer. In this case, it's important to add volume to the top of your head. If we compare these two photos, the left photo is a style that covers the widest part of her hairline like the tip I shared with Kim Kardashian earlier. But we can see how adding volume and height to her crown, like in the right photo, actually makes her forehead appear smaller and more proportionate to the rest of her face, even though in the right photo, Olivia is wearing a side part that exposes the widest part of her forehead. Here's another photo as a comparison. In both photos, Olivia is wearing her hair down, and similar to the last example, the left photo is the hairstyle that covers the widest part of her forehead. But without any volume added to the crown, it still makes her forehead appear bigger than in the right photo. So for Olivia, since she has both a square hairline and a low cranial top, a style that covers the widest part of her forehead along with added volume to the crown is the most ideal style for her proportionally. The photo on the right, on the other hand, is probably the least ideal style for her proportions since with the side part we're exposing the widest part of her forehead and there's almost no added volume to the crown area, so the forehead appears longer and wider compared to the left photo. Now, you might be wondering, then would it be wise to cover the entire forehead and the hairline area with blunt bangs? That would depend on other factors of your face as well. Olivia, for example, has a short face, so covering her entire forehead with bangs makes her face appear even shorter and a little closed off. Exposing parts of her forehead and only covering the sides of it, like in the right photo, and focusing more on the root volume around the crown of the head is a better option for her proportions 
is because it doesn't make her face appear as short or closed off as blood banks. So as you can see, and as I always try to explain, all of these aspects need to be taken into consideration holistically. I feel a little bit bad when I get comments asking generic questions like, do you think I should get bangs if I have a long face? Or would this style look good on me if I have a short face? You know, it's hard for me to give you a specific answer without seeing your face. So if my response to these questions sound very generic, I hope you don't take it personally because I just literally can't tell you without more information. I hope you found today's video helpful. If you did, press those like and subscribe buttons before you go. Check out my other videos that I've linked in the descriptions and I'll see you in my next video. Until then, stay unique and stay gorgeous!